starting. It's let's go. And we're live. Should we start this off with the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh. <laughs> 21 guns salute, yeah, brother. That sounds more appropriate uh, to me. Um, so the fact that we are, we should probably we'll take house make sure. already. Happy 4th, brother. We uh, just uh, impromptu. Yeah. Um, give us a thumbs up on sound and, and are we good? audio video. Hopefully. We don't do this. Yeah. There's like two episodes a year where Mark and I are in charge. And we did ex exceptionally well. We got our chat stuff going on. We got... The only reason this happened is because we have not really started drinking yet. <laughs> In all fairness, well, though. We're, we're about to. <laughs> yeah. So, really what we thought we would do is, it, it's Thursday, it happens to be the 4th of July, uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, Drew's out of town, Andrew's out of town, Mark and I were going to have a drink anyway, uh, probably a cigar at some point. And we figured it wouldn't behoove us to do this at 10 p.m. because we hope that the vast majority of people in the United States uh, that would normally be watching the show at 10 p.m. are blowing something up. Hopefully right. Hopefully so, not their fingers. <laughs> right. So we, we thought we'd get on here early, uh, celebrate a little bit with you guys, wish you guys a happy fourth. Uh, for the people across the pond, you guys are actually right. able to join us for a change, which is really cool. Right. Uh, Bob H. happens to be in Dublin. He is in uh, Dublin, man. Happy so, fourth, Bobby. Good so, to see you, brother. Uh, we, we thought we'd get a chance to say hello live to the people across the pond because we don't get to do that all the time, um, except for the people that are crazy enough to get up at 4 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> and we love you guys, but it, it's nice to go live and, and uh, get a chance to say hi to everybody. And you guys can celebrate uh, us not being a part. Right. Of the UK anymore, I guess. Um, you got rid of us. I don't blame you. <laughs> I don't know. What's some? We got wheelhouse. I know this was impromptu, guys. We didn't quite, uh, you know, advertise it, market it properly. But it's kind of it's, Sean and I going. To be honest, honest Drew does that stuff. That's true. <laughs> and Drew's really enjoying himself up in, on Lake Michigan with the family. I'm, I'm a little jealous. Mark, but... Mark and I are more of a shoot from the hip kind of people. Damn right. Uh... <laughs> Go. <laughs> right? So wheelhouse whiskey's in. Um, Porter's in. Sunday evening scotch. I see Jimmy T. Greg's uh, in. Greg from the other side of town. Of course, Bob. We, uh, we're hoping to catch up with you next week. We'll talk about that on the show here in a little bit. Um, Tom R. and Amy. Um, Cheers, guys. Tune Van, Chad Adams, Joe. Man, lots of people are coming in. So uh, for those of you that are, are in the U.S., happy 4th of July. I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. Happy Treason Day. Yeah, happy Treason <laughs> Day. Happy cow, whatever you want. We, we're going to refer to it as good, Brexit 1776. <laughs> That's horrible. Uh, we, we, we had more of a plan, I think. I think I am. Yeah, that's sad. Um, anyway, <laughs> to start things off, obviously you guys can see we've got the, the Glen Mo 14 uh, Quinta Reuben out front. So that was this week's video. Yes. Um, that was this week's review. And before we get into the whiskey itself, let's back up and get into, you know, the fact that we had Dan on. Um, Dan was part of the review. And so he was here last week when we shot that review. You guys all saw him on the live. Let's back up. All right. I just wanted to check and make sure we had. Yeah. James gave us a thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, we're good. So anyway, we decided since Dan was here, let's put him in, you know, in the review. And we did, we did contemplate because we don't want people to think there's some kind of bias. And I even tried to attack that in the beginning of you saying, listen, yeah. folks, I hope you guys know us well enough that we're going to call it the way we see it. Yeah. Dan here or not. But in, in all honesty, I don't think Dan has anything to worry about. It's not like they put out, you know, swell. They, they put out a quality product. No. And so a couple of people beat us up on comments and said, you know, uh, how can you have an unbiased review? And uh, fair enough. Point taken, loud and clear. I can't disagree with you, but I'm not going to agree with you until you've tried the liquid and told me your perception that it's not good. Because I hate uh, to say honestly, it, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> Here's the thing about Glenmo, and, and it's fun talking to Dan because he's such a knowledgeable guy. Yes. And uh, if you guys ever get a chance to meet him in person, just like us, he's the same way in person that he is. I mean, he's just a, a really super down-to-earth, knowledgeable, nice guy. Uh, but he he came for a very specific reason. He flew in just to hang out with us, and we have a video coming out uh, whenever Drew – Gets around that, that one up, but hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, but we did the entire Glenmo line as much as um, we could get our hands on. Yeah, and, and it was quite extensive. Uh, but it was it was really cool because Dan walked us through 
you know, kind of what we were looking at, at, what Glenn Moe's thought process was on some of this stuff. And the nice thing is that the 14, you will learn in that particular video, they changed it from a 12 to a 14 year. A lot of times when scotch companies do that, it's it's a cash grab, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, something's going on. Usually it's not going a, a age statement longer. It's going from 14 to 12. And, and upping the, the right. price or something like that. So they left, they gave us two extra years on the 14 and left the price the same, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, Hi, KB <laughs> and Highlander 999. Cheers, sir. Hope to see you next year in Scotland when we bring a busload of these dummies over there to invade. We're, we're coming to hang out or get um, on the bus. You can hang out. You don't have to fly. It's true. <laughs> you just got to drive down and look up with us. Um, so uh, it is it is good juice. Um, and they, he explained the reason that they changed it up was because the port casts that they're getting now are, are different sizes than right. they had previous. They're not the traditional uh, and, ones. Yeah. So they're having to change up kind of how they're aging and, and they're getting some inconsistent barrel sizes. So they're they're adding the 14 year because they think that they're going to need the extra time. Um, and he said that, you know, you're going to taste a difference in it. And, and it is, it's, it's, um, uh, I think it's a, it's got two extra years to develop flavor and character and it, it shows, um, uh, and you're still not getting beat up on the price. No, they didn't touch the price at all. Well, I mean that they, they didn't, that doesn't mean that the price isn't going up for various reasons, whether it's trade deals or just the, the market. I mean, it seems like, Scotts has been on the rise for the past, you know, couple years anyway. But it is what it is. It, it is. It, um, but into this fourteen, I first of all, I got to find it. Sean, what did you have pre-poured from here? I have, oh, this is Tom and Tool. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this was from Bob. I brought scotch. Yeah, I brought scotch. <laughs> it isn't weird. Um, but so this was the warm-up glass. We'll get into this Glenmo here in just a second. Oh, he's just up the road from Glen Goyne. Well, imagine that. You wouldn't happen to know anybody at that distillery. We're getting ready to reach out to them and see uh, if we can't. But, but if your neighbor them. happens to work there or something, yeah. that, that helps things out. You don't much. push barrels there, do you? <laughs> <laughs> they hire him? <laughs> oh, my gosh. What size kilts you got, man? I'll, I'll bring one over. Um, anyway, it seems oh, like, man. what's everybody doing today? I, obviously, everybody just jumped right on. We're yeah. happy to see everybody. Uh, I'm hoping somebody's barbecuing. We, we thought it'd just be Mark and I hanging in the basement getting drunk, but we're happy to Which have a bunch, of, wrong a bunch of people <laughs> hanging out watching us get drunk. <laughs> we hope you're having a blast too. As a matter of fact, what are you drinking right now? I hope you're having a good pour of something. And I wouldn't be mad if it were a good old fashioned American bourbon or something. I mean, I get it. Eating you know, a beer. We should be smashing yeah, our beer chest a dog, and, you know, whatever. Peeing pee in the yard and, and shooting guns and blowing stuff up. That's what we do today. That's for that's for tonight. Maybe. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> I am going to have a cigar at some point today. Whiskey uh, Pilgrim from Sweden. Wheelhouse Whiskey's working. I feel you, brother. I ah, do. This is uh, this is one of my. I, I don't. This is maybe my first Fourth of July off in a while. So, uh, well, I guess four years ago I was making Jello shots at this time. Mm. <laughs> Boy, if you ever see videos of that, people, there's no. Video. I will deny, deny, deny. Uh, he made red, white, and blue Jello shots. They were uh, great. I just couldn't get out of them. <laughs> like a kid in the candy store, man. I just, that was bad. They were good. You're getting wheeled home in a red, <laughs> red, what's that big red car? The, the wagon. The thing, wagon, yeah. like, like the wagon, the red wagon you had when you were a kid. Yeah, that's how I got home. Radio flyers. Yeah, radio. So in honor of Drew and Andrew not being here, when we get done hey, talking Andrew. about the, uh, the Glenmo, what we're going to do is we're going to kill some stuff that's just sitting around here like a wounded zebra. Uh, we, we got a bunch of stuff back here. Um, I, I can see a couple bottles that are sticking out to me. Um, maybe this one. A couple of wounded zebras. These aren't zebras. These are high class quality prime cold stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, right there. So that's kind of the the fee for having Mark and I do this all on our own. I wouldn't want us back here with all this scotch. <laughs> That's like sending us to the liquor store with a Scotch for Dummies card. That's never a good idea. Never. Foolish. Never. So anyway, to finish up the Glenmo 14, if you guys haven't tried it, and it's going to be coming into stores, so as the 12 goes out, you'll see the 14 come in. Um, they are, he did say they're changing up some of the packaging on some of the newer 
Uh, labels are not changing the juice, but they're just kind of freshening up the look of the bottles. I, I know he said the um, the nectar, the nectar door was going to change. The the look of right. it was going to change, not the juice in the bottle. So, so George just hijacked Amy's account just to say that he's going to be having the SMWS ninety three one one four, which is a, a yeah. very appropriate bottle. We will be having a Drammer three of that at some point in time today because yes, that's the U.S. exclusive. Yep. We, that's today's the day to, to crack that open. So. Um, Try anyway, to get dressed and call Ben, right? Yeah, we, we, I say we do it. So the um, the difference, is, if you guys didn't pay attention in the video, the, the green label is the 14, the old 12 labels are black, right? The Quincy Rubin is a black label. Um, yeah, yep, the, the 12 is a black label. Right. So, and you know what? I liked the 12. You know, I mean, the, the old 12. Sure. Now, and, and I've never really paid a whole lot of attention to their lineup as a whole. Um I was kind of focused in on on the finishing barrels, what they had done to it. Uh, but you know, their their entry level, all the way up to the eighteen, right? Is is all all starts out as Glenmo ten. Yep, ten and is then the foundation, they, and then they put it into finishing barrels, and that's it. So it's a instead of it being that vertical, you know, this one's going to be finished in Oloroso for twenty five years. It's everybody starts out the same, and then the only difference is, is a couple of years here in port, a couple years here in right. yeah, different maturation, uh, saw turns or whatever. So, I mean, it, it's kind of a unique lineup, really. And it was fun talking to Dan about it. But if you get a chance to try the 14, I, I enjoyed it. I'm enjoying it right now. It's a, it's a tasty gram. But what's it go for? Like 65, 60, 60 bucks? Something like that. I thought it was yeah, 69. Right? I think, you, uh, no, that's the nectar. I think you said this was right, right around 60. So, I'm curious, has anybody seen this on the shelves where you guys are at? And if so, you know, give us a location so that when people can start to see where it, you know where it's showing up. Um, so Glenna Lou says we'll get drunk and, and butt dial Ben. And <laughs> drunk dial Ben. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And Highlander, it's not showing off. We get a US exclusive like one out of every five hundred. Right. <laughs> we we have to wait to pick up the scraps, whatever you guys don't buy over there. Exactly. Like we, we get to look at the outturns and six months later we get that stuff. <laughs> oh, you didn't buy that. That's awesome. <laughs> Actually, some when us. I started the SMWS a couple years ago, when I became a member, at that point in time, I um I was pretty geeky into it, and I really started digging into them, um, and looking at their releases, their outturns, and I I discovered that what was getting released to the U.S. market was what was released to the European market six months to eight months later. Right. So I reached out to Roy Aquavita, and I'm like, hey. As you're going through the outturns, if you find something that you just think is bomb data, you give me that number so I'm ready for it. The day it hits the States, before KB can get it. Before <laughs> KB, yeah, I'm going, well, uh, due to the popularity and growth of the U.S. market, um, that's not the way it works anymore. We, we kind of are big enough to get our own allocation and recognition from, you know, from the tasting panel. So I feel like that's a good deal. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it'll be... Uh, I think what they need to do is fly some people from the states over to uh, to pick out the outturns, right? I mean, we, we've got a different flavor profile. I'm just saying, Mark and I are available if you need us to go over and sit in the tasting room. I, I could give it a shot. So Mike <laughs> Porter's talking about Bacalta. I, I so he's, he's I need to go back and watch Whiskey in the Six um, review of it if he rated it higher than Signet. So because. Um, Signet's pretty damn good. I had a glass of it last night. We're gonna have some of it today. And he also said that he saw the, the this fourteen down in Kentucky. So you know, let's. It's getting around. Not to change subjects or anything, but uh, you know, you're talking about Kentucky or down south. Did, did you guys see what happened? Oh yeah. I mean, well, how, how do you not wake up to tears to see what Jim Beam did? I mean, uh, it's just it's mind boggling. Forty five thousand casks. Forty five thousand. That's a lot of whiskey. I, I got to think that at some point their insurance companies are like, hey, you're out of luck. How you doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> let, let's talk this through a little bit. <laughs> Sorry about your luck, but you guys need to start self-insuring because we ain't paying for that. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, at some point, do you just not turn that in? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't I don't know. That's sickening, though, to think about. I mean, the only thing that's – and this isn't even saving grace, but at least in the in their industry – it's a shorter period of time to recover. That happens in Scotland, and you've got barrels that have been aging for 12 to 25 years. That hurts bad. Yeah, that's why they, they move everything around. Like, that's why they sell barrels to other distilleries to basically hold for them. Right. 
So just in case there is a problem, mm -hmm. you know, you've you've got some stock someplace else. Sprinklers are your friend. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm sure most of you guys have been on some sort of distillery tour. I don't know if you guys have ever taken apart a barrel or not. I have. Barrels are no joke. Um, They're not little flimsy pieces. No, of wood, dude. Um, you could you could easily drive over one with a vehicle. No problem. They're tough. If, if you could, I mean, there that wood is solid. It's not going to bend or break. I mean, the stools that we sit on every week are, are made out of barrel staves and I mean I could hit that with a sledgehammer and it wouldn't do anything to it uh, so I'm, I'm kind of surprised with the density of the wood I mean I'm sure once the fire gets going it gets going and there's probably a lot of vapor in the air but man <laughs> I would think even an alcohol fire it would take a while to actually get the barrels to catch on fire I don't know I'd probably just sit outside and, and cry. <laughs> what else are you going to do? Because you're not putting it out. I mean, I, no. <laughs> uh, no, you're not putting it out. <laughs> you know, you say that, everyone, uh, but uh, we were down in, in bourbon country, what, six months ago, right? Yeah. Seven months ago or whatever. And uh, I was amazed when you walked through those. I mean, they're, some of those dunge houses, they're older than the, the hills, the, man. The one I mean, that we went into at Castle and Key was like 300 yards long. Yeah, and the building, it's not I like mean, it was a new structure here, right? No. You walk in there, and you, you're kind of fearful that the, the roof's going to cave in, and you let alone catch fire. It was, it was made for short people. <laughs> right. I mean, it just is what it is, but... Uh, Can you get your... <laughs> I don't know, KB. You got to be close, KB. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have any facial hair. You got to be real close. Speaking of Glenn Moe. I'm gonna have a little splash of this. Oh, that's the good stuff, huh? I thought I would start off with this this Quinto Reuben and, and I already did that one. And try to you know talk myself out of a good review because I, I actually well, like it. I, we know what we're drinking. What are you guys all drinking? Yeah, no one has really given me a hint on this yet. So Everwin did make it back alive, Wheelhouse Whiskey. Oh, I had no doubts that everyone would geez. make it. He's had tons of pictures on Facebook on his sailing adventures. Bud's uh, in the house. Uh oh, Bud's in the house. Good I to see you, Bud. I made a promise that I made a donation to Bud's birthday charity. I saw that. So I liked it. Bud, it, it's you got to show up at the bar, though. You got to come get it, though, brother. <laughs> we'll take good care of you. We start off with a couple bottles of Lagavulin, and, and then we'll see where we're at. You know what would be creepy is if your doorbell rang. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, gosh. He brought scotch, and it's awkward. Smell this. So, hang on. Why? I'm, you're going to ruin this for me. I'm going to get into my own little... It's way different than this. Yeah, it is. It smells like butterscotch compared to this. Um, so, uh, Tom's B. Man. Honestly, it's very similar to the 12. Uh, you can... You know what? I, We've got the yeah, we do. I, I would say that it's it's got a similar port profile, but I think that the whiskey itself is a little more refined. Did we? I mean, we had a bottle. Did we kill that thing? I'm sorry, guys. We're pretty good at that kind of stuff. Damn. No. Really? It's not in the box? Ah, there you go. There you go. Man, I'm telling you what. We're going to find out. We're going to do this. I'm going to the side. I'm just going to put a cap on it here. There we go. I'll tell you what. This stuff that Dan brought as super special surprise is ridiculous. We'll get into that after we get into this. I'll put this one up here see if they can tell the difference on that. I, I can tell you right now that this one, it's got a little bit, little bit of edge to the nose that that one didn't have. They're the same, I think they're the same ABV too, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're going to like the 14 better. The 12 is good. You get that port, but it's also got a fiery, like, roughness about it, I guess, is the only way I can really describe it. It just seems a little young and a little hot is, is kind of where it comes down at. Oh, gosh. Hang on, I haven't hit this. This is the 12. Yep. Whereas the 14, to me, 
I mean, you guys know how whiskey, when it ages, it just gets a little more smooth and mellow. I think it's got a little bit more depth and complexity to it. Um, it does. This one, the 12 smells thinner. I, I mean, does that make sense? That, you know, what's thinner smell like? Honestly, this just smells a little bit softer and deeper. Yeah. This just, it smells just a little bit thinner. I don't yeah. want to say younger, but. Yeah. So. Maybe a little bit more rubier. No. <laughs> Highlander 999 just figured out that it was the 4th of July here. Oh, no, no, you get uh, what we're talking about. <laughs> Freedom! We don't usually get to drink at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Thursday. But when it's 4th of July, we do. 4th <laughs> of July and Christmas. Mm. Was that 12? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is edgier. Hands down. Yep. Honestly, it actually tastes like it, like it's higher ABV, even though it's not. Um, the 14 has got a little bit more of an earthy smell to it, like an old leathery. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Highlander, <laughs> and he gets it. Three <laughs> dog. That's right. And Everwind uh, <laughs> has Will Smith on the brain. It's all good, man. <laughs> oh, that's right. That that makes it a little bit more palatable. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> well, so I I like the twelve, but I honestly think, especially for same price, yeah, the fourteen's where it's at now. Knowing that this is going away. If I saw it on the shelf, I'd probably grab a bottle and put it put it back just because I know it's gone. Yeah. And it's it's a fun comparison to be able to do this, especially with people that that are trying to get in and, and really learn how to compare scotches. This is a great way to compare it because um, it's so similar, but there's, you know, difference. Just to give you a little uh, preview since you guys are all on here, uh, and we're getting some people from the U.K. that we don't usually Which get. kind of what we were aiming for. That's kind of what we were aiming for. That and, you know, we plan on being a little more inebriated later. Uh, but <laughs> so our lineup on the bar started with the 10. Then we had La Santa. We had both of these guys that are sitting out here. We had the 18. We had the Signet. We had three travel retail. Yeah. We had um, the Alta. Yeah. And we also got into, we got to try um, this one. We didn't do this one on the show, though, on, no. the, on the review, but uh, this one was cool. Life. Yeah, that was just a little gift that Dan brought. We got to try some of the new make. Which was really interesting. That was crazy. Um, crazy. I, I love doing that. I, I love getting a chance to sample a, a distillery's new make because that, that's where it starts, right? Yep. So to be able to but sample it. But it never tastes anything like what you get in the end i no, mean no 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 a lot of it is the wood and it just has to sit and take on some flavor and get rid of some harshness but it is absolutely amazing what it turns but that but they all are unique yeah. and so i mean it's no it's, they are i mean you really get a flavor for what what started this you know where did this come from came from the barley mm, good stuff right? i'm just saying mm-hmm it's 7.30 p.m. in the U.K. whiskey time. Cracked open an SMWS. What's the number, Stuart? You can't just say SMWS. I will say. The devil's in the detail. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of excited that we're getting some people from the U.K. on. I am too. Uh, we, we don't get to usually go live at, at this time, and this was one of those deals that was specifically planned out because we could do this and, and kind of interact with some people over in the U.K., and, and for um, everybody, all of our regular subscribers that are able to join, you guys are getting a chance to interact with those folks over there too because they're they're joining in, which is and hopefully you know, everybody over here had the day off and you're just having a drink anyway. Hopefully, I mean, except for Wheelhouse Whiskey, yeah, he drink yet. But he's hopefully he's gonna take like, <laughs> double time or something. <laughs> KB, is it is it Green Bottle? Is what Green Bottle? Oh, oh, he's talking about SMWS. I think he's. He's trying to get more oh, detail on that. Jesus, man. Mark Slinger from Scotland. Man, I want to be in Scotland. <laughs> you guys are killing me, man. Can well, you lie and let, say? Let, let me ask you, since we've got a bunch of people on from Scotland, which is pretty cool, we don't get to normally be live with you guys. Um, we're planning our trip next year at the end of June. 
Uh, will any of you be available to come and hang out? Um, either, you know, go on the tour with us, uh, maybe meet up in the evening somewhere afterwards just to hang out and have a dram and a uh, hotel. We're hoping, to, we're hoping to meet up with a bunch of people, you know, not just the people that are coming on the tour, but, um, you know, we've gotten some emails from some people that were already planning a trip, uh, you know, so that they're over with their wife or whoever, and, and they just wanted to figure out, you know, where we were going to be on which days so they could plan up, hey, you know, I'm going to be kind of close to where you guys are staying. You know, I, I'd just like to meet up and, and hang out and have a dram with you guys and talk for a little bit. Awesome. We love that stuff. We're going to be putting the itinerary out when it gets locked down. That's for sure. Sean and I are actually in charge of reaching out and kind of setting up the distillery tours. And so we're in our infant stage on that, but um, super excited about it. I, I really feel good about what, what we want to accomplish um, as far as visiting distilleries. But I really hope that we're able to cross paths with as many people that um, are local and, and, you know, subscribe to the channel or are a part of the whiskey community, right? Whether it's the whiskey tube community, whether it's, you know, hooking up with Roy, um, maybe Ralphie, anybody that's over there that that's, that's into this small community we want to get in touch with. Yeah. Sometime. I, I mean, honestly, we love doing that kind of stuff. Um, we're, we're kind of, KB's already hitting us up to go back to New York in December for the, uh, the whiskey thing that we did last year, which would be cool. I, I'd like to do that. Oh, that's all right, Tom. Marl. It was impromptu, buddy. Go off and, and you got to do what you got to do. So wait a minute. Sam's from the UK. That's cool. Yep. I mean, we're getting, I, I'm loving seeing everybody from Cross the Pond tune in. Um, <laughs> but I don't know if Arizona is the opposite of Scotland. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to classify Arizona. I, 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 I assume you're, uh, you're going to come with us, right, bud? You got you to gotta come to Scotland with us. I don't know if my liver can hang out that long, but don't Sean you, is drinking too much. Don't you let Bud scare you. Come on now. <laughs> don't you let Bud scare you. So, well, and you know what, Highlander 999, what we'd like to do is get with people like you that are local that, you know, we can say, hey, we're going to be staying in this particular town, you know, for, for on this evening. You know, not only do we want to get together with you, but where should we go? You know, who's got a good whiskey selection, you know, uh, let us know. I mean, if we got to go to the next town over, you know, I'm yeah. It, you know, one of the great local watering holes or something, something we just got to go see or got to go right. experience. Uh, maybe it's not just a great watering hole. Maybe they got the best, you know, haggis in town. I don't just name it. You know, let, I, we want to immerse ourselves as much as we can. And honestly, it's about spending time with the people. Yes. We're going to love it. the distillery tours. Of course, we're going to love the scenery being in Scott, but, but the right people. Yeah. Well, and you know, honestly, we're when we're reaching out to these distilleries, we want to talk to the people that, you know, I, I don't really want to talk to the college kid that's got a summer job taking tours around. I, like, I want to talk to somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. Well, so it makes a big difference. The, the, the guy um, or the lady that's been making this shit for 15 or 20 years. Right. right? <laughs> I, I want to talk to the person who I need to talk to to uh, throw him some money and, and wheel a cask out of Johnny Chelsea onto the bus. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Gotta go to a wedding in Puerto Vallarta. You need to talk to that bride, bud. Get your priorities straight. Sunday evening scotch? Yes. So that kind of stuff, that's what we're talking about. Um, I mean, because, you know, it's not free to get over there for a lot of people. And, you know, a lot of times you got family, you got kids with you. You know, you, you can't go do all the stuff that you'd like to do. Um, but if we can cross paths with you, if you're going to be, you know, close to a town or city that we're going to be in, you know, or maybe the wife lets you slip away for, for a couple hours and come on a tour Absolutely. with us. You know, we'd, we'd love to have, you know, people join us. It's That's kind of why we're doing all this. You know, I mean, we'd all like to Test go over together, but, you know, it's, it's a lot about what we've learned, especially in the past few years, is how much fun we have going to whiskey events and meeting up with people that watch us all the time. They, they know who we are. Uh, and it's it's really cool. See, look, there's somebody, Ben from Scotland, willing to give us a tour of the bottling hop. They see, and Lana, you're right. And, and honestly, it it's so that everything about this journey, whether it's just tasting whiskey or talking through it, having a dram, doing it with people that enjoy it as much as you do, is what really makes it 
enjoyable. I mean, honestly, you, you get so much more out of it. I mean, we've learned so much more doing this with a group and with everyone that, that tunes in than had we just sat at home in our own. Oh, bar. they want to know which distilleries we're specifically planning. Do we have the, the list down there? Oh, that's right. right sure. there. Yep. So Andrew, Andrew got with a company because we need a bus. Um, we hope we need a bus. We hope we have that many people. Uh, it, I think we'll. I think we're fine. I think we'll be fine. Um, uh, so wow, Nightbot's even going. How do we get that going? How about that? See, let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Drew logged in and fixed a bunch yeah, of stuff while we yeah. were paying any attention at all. Thank you, Drew. We miss you. <laughs> Which we really appreciate you. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> we we got this, man. We can handle this. How how bad can this be? Okay, so I've got. Something floating in my sky. I've got um, let's see. Ball Blair, uh, Klein Leash and Brora. And, see what's going on there. And we're probably doing Glenmo that day also. And I think we're going to throw Glenmo in that one because uh, we're we're going to we're going to lean on Dan pretty heavy on that. Um, so that'll be day one. Day two is Old Poltne and Wolfburn. Got to get up there. If we're going all the way up there, we're going to see both of those. Um, and we know people there. And we know people there, right. Oh, then we're going to swing through Spay, which does not give tours to the public, but we've got an inside track on that. Really interested in that. Seen pictures of it. Awesome people. Yes. So Spay Distillery. Um, then we're going to go into Space Side, which we're going to hit Tamdu, uh, Glendronic. Dun, dun, dun. We're gonna hit that one hard. Yeah. <laughs> beat it, beat it down. Uh, just um, then we're hitting uh, bonus stop at Glen Caddam. We'll see if that works out. Uh, Deanston and Glen Goyne. Um, so I think it, it, it shakes out. We're trying to get ten distillery visits, but at the same time, it's it. Our goal isn't just to run through distilleries here. No. Because I mean, if, if that's your goal, honestly, you go through one. You can probably say you've seen one, you've seen one. We want to get to the the uniqueness of each one. Let's get into the intricacies. What makes Glen going different from Deanston, from Ball Blair? What's Ball. going on at this new buildup of Aurora, right? I mean, I, we want to get into some of those fun details. And yeah, it's good. Holy. Um, and get to know the people behind that distillery that make it run from day to day. So. Uh, that's subject to change. We haven't we haven't locked these tours down, um, and and we'll see. We we definitely don't want the off the street public tour. No, I can tell you that much. So we yeah, the, Mark, Mark and I are Rob, and you're killing me. We're gonna hit it hard. Um, no violence. I, well, here's the thing, Robin. What we're planning on doing is making this an annual deal. Uh, we would like to go back every year and and take a group, and we're not gonna hit the same distilleries every single time. Uh, so I mean. Next year is our inaugural tour, and there are a lot of distilleries that we know a lot of people at. Um, there are some that we just really enjoy the distillery, so we kind of want to hit those if we can, if they'll let us in and give us some behind the scenes stuff. Um, but I'm sure that there'll be an Islands tour just because we're not going to keep Andrew away from Isla forever. <laughs> right. And, and I don't want to stay away from Isla. But no. the, the, the thing is, is that's if, if you're shooting for that, that kind of becomes the new target. You, you really don't have time to, right. It, it takes over because it, it, the travel to and from there is kind of takes, a, I, it's tough. It, it, whittling this is never going to be easy. It, it won't. Um, Stuart is asking about an Israeli distillery and that's a good question. Didn't know anything about that. So honestly, we've had some, some contact with a couple of whiskey clubs in Israel in the last yep. month or so doing some really cool stuff. And um, I might actually reach out to the guy that runs those two clubs and ask him if he's got any kind of inside track on, on that. Uh, and if he, if he does, if he could send us a sample or something, because I'm very interested in seeing what that's about. Yeah. Hi, Molly. <laughs> Molly came down to check on us because it's still light out, and she's wondering what we're doing down here. We have totally <laughs> messed up her day. confused. <laughs> Dog is definitely confused. Hey, Trooper. Um, and DYM Capital, greetings from Columbia and could make a whiskey special with cigars. Ben, we're, uh, we are fortunate in that we actually know a lot of people that work at distilleries. So right. our, when we say non-standard tour, what we mean is non-standard tour. 
Uh, we're going to see. Um, we, we do have a lot of kind. We, we've worked hard over the last four years. We're coming up on our five year anniversary too next year. So there's question on whether we're going to try to have something special for that or if this will be that special thing. But over the last five years, yes, we, we've really played hard on managing our relationships in the industry and getting to know people and, and, and building a network. And, and it's going to it's going to pay off on a trip like this. I mean, yep. we, we've met a lot of people and really are, are very fortunate to have a lot of very influential people in the industry that are, are, are good colleagues and, and contributors, you know, friends of ours, I guess you could say. <laughs> Chad, I don't blame you. And, and you know what? Everybody's got that special place that they want to hit, right? Like there's there's that one distillery that you're going right. to spend the money to go mm -hmm. over to see. No offense, You're going to have to go to. So, but Here's the thing. There's a lot of distilleries that I'd like to go see that aren't on that list. Absolutely. But what our plan was, having gone to distillery tours before, I mean, really to get into it, if you're getting a behind the scenes kind of special access tour and they're kind of rolling out the red carpet for you a little bit and spending a little time with you and you maybe get a little private tasting at some point, if you're doing all that stuff, it's going to take you a half a day. It's going to be a four four hour tour probably is what you're looking at so if you're taking a four hour tour yeah be careful let's say three hour yeah, yeah 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 and it's bad uh but you're looking at two distilleries a day that that's it that's all you can really get in with drive time and everything else oh, that, that's about all and you the can goal do. isn't just to freaking run everyone ragged honestly we we, we want to enjoy the good times with everybody that's there it's so, about the experience so when we were <laughs> sitting down kind of figuring all this out number one we didn't want to take up like a week or ten days of everybody's time because honestly, everybody's spending a bunch of money to get over there. There's stuff you're going to want to go see, right? Like if you drag your wife all the way to Scotland to make her sit on a bus for five days, you're going to end up having to go to see some stuff that she wanted to see. And, and that's fine. Right. That's cool, right? right. Uh, but I, I think that this kind of covers that. So if you wanted to come over and do the tour with us and still spend some time going to see some other stuff, you could. Um, or you could wait and, you know, like I said, we're planning on doing this every year. So I, I think it'd be fun. Hey, I'm planning on retiring over there for a few years after I go. So, I mean, you guys uh, just make sure you stay in touch. <laughs> I don't know how my wife's going to feel about that, but, uh, <laughs> but we'll figure it out. Hi, Lee. Uh, safe travels to you. What are you doing up in Colorado? You're supposed to be at the fish camp blowing stuff up right now, but I understand. <laughs> We did eight on island three days. Most of us could hardly walk at the end, right? You literally had to take your liver out and dry it off in the clothesline. <laughs> right, man. I mean, well, at, at some point you're missing stuff. You know what I mean? Because you just, it's too much to, to really all, to take it all in, you know? Yeah. And so we want to kind of take our time and, and get a chance to talk to the people at the distilleries and give everybody else a chance to, you know, kind of enjoy themselves. Hey. So, Yes, Brianna, we know. Yeah, we know. My wife's going My, my wife's going along on the bus. Yes, that, there's no question about that. Um, so Stuart said he was just at the Glen going in June. Oh, my F and G, he says, man. And so Bob H., who's in Dublin right now, just did the Glen Goyne tour, I don't know, a few days ago, called me from Glen Goyne, who said, said he was disappointed. I felt like saying, Bob, what did you expect? You walked in and took the, you know, off street, you know, bottom rung tour. But they gave you a couple of drams. They walked you to the Donut House. That's kind of what a distillery tour is. Right. If you're just coming in off the street. They're not going to let you run it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You want to flip some malls? Yeah, okay, get in here. Um, Sign me up, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll totally do that. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of bottles that when somebody comes in and says this is a 700 dollars bottle that i'm like yeah it's probably worth 700 dollars. it's good this is a really it is good really glass. good <laughs> like a really really good glass so yeah tom's confusing everybody hi lee g when i said hi lee i was actually talking to scotch in the body her name is lee but since i see you say hey, my name's lee too cheers <laughs> All right. Um, what am I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to enjoy this one more time. I'm, I'm going to come down off of that with a little signet, and then I'm going to get back into normal scotch. Well, we do have to at least make sure we have one of the uh, U.S. exclusive uh, fishnets and barbecues or whatever it's called. Yeah. I'll tell you what. If you guys have never had a bottle of signet, stuff's no joke. And the cork, is, with that cork. cork can kill you, man. Yeah. 
That's a good bottle. Yeah, it is. So, what else obviously, you, going on? You, you know, Sean and I are the two schleps that didn't get to get away for the, the uh, 4th of July holiday and, and do anything with the family. So, we're all kind of laying low. We'll settle the family here. Yeah, we're going to lay low and, and, and figure it out. Hey, did you say you were going to drop some wings? Maybe. I know. <laughs> that I seems like, American, right? I like the sound of that. I could be persuaded to come over here and beat you guys in the game of bags. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling frothy. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Glad Mo Signet someday, Sean. I, you know what? I think you, you, even if you can't afford a bottle of Signet, I think you, you deserve to treat yourself to a dram of it at a bar yeah. somewhere because it really is unique. It, I, yeah. the, the, the flavor profile really is different, and I absolutely enjoy it. I don't know what else is going on. I, uh, <laughs> I had a conversation with, uh, with our good friend KB yesterday. So we both did. Sean calls me and says, you coming over here, KB's lonely. It's Whiskey Wednesday, and his best friend Bob is in over the pond. So we had to do a FaceTime with KB. Just Which so was could... awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Now, here's the thing. You can't FaceTime without cast drink whiskey. whiskey. Not and, with KB. We, we got into some cast drinks. Stuff. We did. But um, some really nice stuff, too. We also talked about, so next week, uh, Drew and I um, – are going out there to New York to spend some time with KB and Bob, and we're going to be running around uh, Manhattan, going down to the Spaniard to see Mikey, uh, and hopefully getting in touch with um, our good friend Steph Ridgeway and having some drinks with her, and we might hit a brewery or something. I don't know. Yep. I, I know one thing. KB has put together uh, a few flights of SMWS that has my liver a little concerned, but I think we're going to be okay. I I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, when we when we drunk dial Ben I'm, here in a few minutes, I'm, I'm going to persuade him. I'm not worried about you, man. I'm I'm much more worried about Drew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so am I. So while we're on live, let me let me fill you in on what happened last week after the live show with Dan. Ah, are we going to go into that? Well, <laughs> so. Mark and I are usually the ones who stay up way too late drinking probably a little more than we probably should, right? And last Thursday, we had a partner in crime because Dan Dan hung out. <laughs> he was here for the long haul, man. Uh, Drew went home, Andrew went home, and we were waiting on the Uber for Dan at 2.45 in the morning. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> It was <laughs> yeah. So here's you guys don't realize. So Sunday evening sketch. Mark was hammered last Thursday. No, no, we were just warming up when we oh got my off. Gosh, the line. You have no idea. <laughs> See what you guys don't realize is I get off every other Friday, and it's pretty obvious to tell if I'm off that following Friday by how I'm acting that previous Thursday night. If I don't have to work the next day. You know, and everything just lined up. The <laughs> Mark was off the next Friday. Dan was here, and it was my birthday. Exactly. <laughs> the it stars aligned. Totally going to be out of hand. And it was. It was a good time. It did, yeah. <laughs> right. it was, we had a great time, though. Dan's a good, a good person to have around when you're having drinks for sure. And I'll tell you what, watching him pick out that op. I, if you guys haven't watched that, it, go back and watch the stream on that. We poured, we blind poured, Drew blind poured um, Dan Kroll uh, a, a glass of this OP that was a store pick from Warehouse Liquors in, in Chicago. Gene uh, picked this one. It's an exquisite whiskey. Delicious. He, he nailed it. He had no idea what was in the glass. And he, he nailed it off of this bar. I was like, man, even his notes, as he's sniffing it and tasting it, I'm like, dude, is he reading the tasting when, notes? What when you hell? watch him do that, that is what – I mean, it's it's impressive. Like, I aspire to be that good. Oh, man. I don't think I'll – now you're talking, brother. I know. This is freaking – this makes me want to say, America. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I'm having some of that or if I'm having uh, – that other one we had last night with uh, I know was that's really all good, good stuff, man. but this is this is today, man. This is Fourth of July, man. Put this all right. One row down. All right. All right. So barbecue and fishnets. High spirits tour, man. We're gonna make this happen. You guys, stay tuned. So, yeah, and as we get closer, we're gonna put some stuff up on the website so you guys can kind of track us and and figure out what's going on. But we we really would I like to have. Uh, some some extra people come along and, and hang out at, at, after the 
hard day of drinking we're going to have every day. Lana said she was dragging her husband along. <laughs> Fair enough. He's going to have a good time, and you know it. Oh, God, yeah. Hey, we got something in the mail that we need to open. Oh, holy moly. What did we get? A stack. A stack of coins from Whiskey Dick. The Whiskey Dick. Let's see what we've got here. We've got 160, 161. 61 through 165. I bet one's for uh, for Mikey. Yep. I do the research bookers. The Whiskey Dictionary, batch one. Check it out, you guys. Good looking Good coins. coins. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Duly noted. I think I'm going to put it on. Put it on top of my glass right now. Sorry, Scott and Barb. You guys just got knocked for today. Just it. I got Drew's coin. Hey, by the way, did everybody see uh, Bud said he found Bart's part-time job? <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We'll keep this up for a little while. Man. See, see, I don't know if anybody can see it. Good looking Let's coin. See. Um. <laughs> That's what she said. I'm sorry. If you ever watched The Office, I had to say that. Well, I mean. <laughs> the coins make your hands look so <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, man. That's horrible. Gosh. To be fair, we do have big hands. So it's the camera. <laughs> big feet. Um <laughs> I'm sorry, it's getting off again. We're getting off topic here, you guys. Oh, this this smells explosive. Yeah. Do you guys catch that? I know that was really bad. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll stop. That, that was for Andrew. He's, he's not gonna stop. <laughs> that was for Andrew. He's totally not gonna stop. It's uh, all right. It's all right, man. Man, this really does smell good. So <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, uh, you should have been here after the show. <laughs> Ray, I, I hate to tell you, but literally what you see is what you get. I'm serious. When the camera gets turned off, nothing changes. You guys really, no. you, this is, you get unfiltered. We do clean up the language a wee bit. I do. I try on camera because yeah. I'll do this off camera. It, I'm I'll tell you what, when we get on the bus in Scotland, it's going to be more like sailors. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the true nature of things. But, um, you know, I don't want YouTube to kick us off. I, so. I, I hope you guys like watching movies in between distilleries because we got a bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> ah, so Brooks Henderson wanting the Tam do. I'll have to try these. I'm going to Scotland in a couple weeks and see what I like best. Thanks for getting. So the Tam do. I mean, what do you want out of Tam do? There's a lot in that lineup. Are you talking about their batches or are you talking about if you do their regular? The regular lineup. What have we reviewed in their lineup? I'm I'm already confusing them ten. with Tulliver Bean. So they're ten. Honestly, the, the batch stuff is 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 wonderful. Not so much maybe this latest one, the four. I wasn't too fond of, but um, it's good. I mean, I it, it's Tamdu's a great distillery. You won't go wrong. You're you're gonna like what you drink from them. Tomat and twelve for twenty eight bucks. Trooper says so. Drew and I visited Tomat and when we were over in Scotland. What it's been almost two years ago now. Um, <laughs> awesome See, time. Bud's Bud's showing up for movies. He's not even coming for the scotch. I know. That's <laughs> he right. says he's going to be in Port of Vallarta. I mean, we they don't want to hear that. I know. What you do is you tell her you're going to Port of Vallarta, but you end up in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Tom says we need to stream our after shows for our patron members. I don't know if they want to see that, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, we dropped many f bombs. I Thursday. did. Well, I'll tell you what. The other thing that was messed up about Try last Thursday. To. Normally, when we come down for a live, we all get here about nine o'clock, set up all the equipment, get everything ready to go, talk to everybody on Discord for about a half hour, and then we go live. And so we maybe have a glass or two while we're getting everything ready to go, right? So we really haven't had that much by the time we go live. Last Thursday, we had Dan in town. So he flies in. He comes over here about 5.30, 6 o'clock. We have dinner. And then we came downstairs, and we shot two reviews. And then we hung out. So we came down here about 7. 
So we were down here for a yeah. while. So we did a couple of reviews before we started the pre-live festivities. So by the time we went live, we'd all had about five, six, maybe seven drams before we and even got started. And had the stuff on the bars cast strength. Yeah. So it's not like you're drinking lightweight well, stuff. Here. Yeah. And after we did the reviews, we told we told Dan, go ahead. You know, I mean, everything's – if you guys ever come over here, everything's on limits. Like anything that's hanging out back here, if it's open, if it's open. Out. If it's open. If it's not open, it may still be on limits, but let us know because we may be doing a review on it. Right, we're holding uh, for something. But I mean, if it's open, knock yourself out. So he he got into some like he wasn't shy about it. He found some cool stuff and, and picked out some good stuff. He did. He, he um, actually did. I actually thought I thought it was kind of funny. He hit the OP twenty one a few times. Yeah. And I made a comment. I'm like, you know, they thought that stuff's gone. He's like, why do you think I'm hitting it? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, Dan. You know, he's, he's so dummy, man. He wasn't shy about it either. God love him. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> Mikey says hi. Oh, Mikey from uh, from uh, the Spaniard. The Spaniard. How do you know that? Because he was wasn't Sunday evening scotch. He was the guy that was at the Spaniard when we were there. No, that's wasn't Michael that Porter. Him? Sunday evening scotch is Michael Porter. Oh, well, who's the guy that was there when we were there? Mikey uh, says hi. His kid, Mikey. Uh, no, my no, Mikey. Yeah, his Mikey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You've been dragging. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, Let me know what bottles to bring on my next visit. Tom, Tom, Tom. You know, we've been to Chicago at least once now and have a chance to be there a lot more, and we still haven't been invited to your bar. So to tell you what to bring is tough. You need to let us come see it. I'm trying to try my Jedi mind trick. It doesn't work through the camera. Damn it. <laughs> Dan oh, from, from Germany. Germany. What's going on over Good there? Roger that. It's launching. I'll tell you what. My favorite live shows that we do are the ones that we do like this, where it's kind of middle of the afternoon. We're just kind of messing around, and we catch a bunch of people out of normal time zones that we normally get in. And uh, they actually get to jump on, and, and I have a closet. <laughs> That sounds kind of creepy. It puts the lotion on his skin. Right. <laughs> Gosh, man, everybody's saying I dropped a lot of F-bombs last week. I don't want to watch that video. I'm not going to go back and watch it. I'm just going to try to we were uh, my bad, guys. I, well, I'll that'll get you used to what's going to happen on the bus. Yeah, I mean. It, we have a great time, though. Yeah, we it's all in fun and jest. Fun. And nothing serious. I mean, I called no. you, call you a shit. That might have been serious. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, maybe. Uh, what else we got going on, man? Uh, that's a good question. There was something else I wanted to talk to you about, and I, I'm like slipping my Drew, mind. Drew left for a week, and he gave us instructions, mm -hmm. and we promptly forgot them. But uh, I think that we're supposed to shoot a review this week. Yeah. Let's it's see. only Thursday, so we've got time. Uh, <laughs> that's like I, that, that, that meme if you seen on Facebook, Thomas Jefferson, on July 3rd. He's like, shit, that's due tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, Drew. We'll get to it. I heard that it took him 17 days to write the Declaration of Independence. How many? 17 days. That's a long time, man. To be writing something. Uh, that's 17 days I don't have. I mean, it's hard enough for me just to read it in one sitting. I mean, he, he pulled some hard language out. I, you know, he wasn't messing around. I give it to him. Plus, you're sending it over to the king and, you know. Living the Scotch Whore lifestyle. Dang right, man. Uh, <laughs> Wolf oh of Wall gosh. Street mode. Oh my gosh, you guys need to come over for you guys need to come over here for a casino tonight. Oh casino my God, floor, man. man! I tell you what, we have we him and my wife. They're out for blood, yeah, man. That's right, man. It's all good. It doesn't take long for us to all get three sheets to the uh, wind and start gambling way too hard. Scotch on the Bayou's coming up for the next one, right? Uh, she's, she's she said. needs I don't to. Know. She's she's getting busy. Everyone's busy. <laughs> she's got a lot of stuff going on. I wish I was going out to Isla for the class, man. I do too. I uh, I, we're gonna make it to Isla at some point, but mm. yeah, in two years probably. Because you know Andrew's not going to let us go back to Scotland so, a second time without going to Ireland. Fair enough. I'll tell you what. We we probably do, you know, th think drinking this. Are you drinking that fish nuts? Is that what you're drinking? Yeah. 
Um, sipping on this, and then seeing some water. So yeah, I, I I touched a lot, but seeing some of the comments from some of the friends over in Scotland uh, and over the pond, uh, not having access to this, it makes me want to to put a, a couple samples back and, and try to figure out oh. a way to to share a few of these in. few few of these drams with some of those folks that didn't have access to this because I it, you need to try it. You need it needs to be shared. I mean, Uncle Vitae's right. It really isn't whiskey until yeah. it's shared, and so. Uh, we'll figure out a way to make, you know, a couple of these available to, to some of our friends overseas. Um, what did you say here? Hmm? You said something about my Porter's coming over for uh, casino night. Oh, yeah. I'll bring it. That's <laughs> going to be a good time. I'll pitch in for the sitter, man. Don't you worry. Just get here. <laughs> we have a good time. It, it's a lot of fun. It really is. We do a lot of cool stuff here. So has anybody, I'm seeing, reading Bud's comment, and yesterday I was at the uh, Meyer grocery store, and uh, I noticed that they had Lagavulin 8. And I was like, huh, Meyer, wow, really? But um, it makes me makes me think to what Isla just, our Lagavulin just released. I saw that um, our friend in Germany, Hoagie, picked up a couple of Lagavulins he put on Facebook. And I know that, I know that Bud had to get revived. He had to be, like, resuscitated when he saw the picture. But uh, has anybody else picked up any of those um, those new exclusive log ones? I think there's what a 19, and a, I'd have to look it up on Facebook. Did you see uh, between the sticks? You need to get on the uh, log of woolen appreciation society that Bud started. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an admin. <laughs> I'm, I'm an admin on that. What are you doing? Because <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, there's some log of woolen lovers out there, man. Uh, and Peter Hoyer, if you uh, want to get a hold of us, uh, email us at scotchfordummies at gmail.com, and we can hook you up with an address because we always love trying new stuff. Absolutely, we do. Um, log is a trap. I've been stuck in that stupid <laughs> trap. <laughs> um, it's good. It, it, there's it, worse it, places to be. That's man. true. That's true. <laughs> I gotta tell you though, and lately, guys, my my, uh, my profile is just getting into that darker, darker, leathery, dungeony. That's my flavor right now. <laughs> I, for some reason, that's kind of. I mean, that picture that um that Bob sent us today. He Bob was in Dublin, is in Dublin right now, and he was at uh, Trinity College in the library. In there, when you go to to do the um the tour and see the Book of Kells, or whatever yeah. that library, it's it's an amazing place. You walk in and you just and the smell of it. It just smells like. I want my scotch to smell like that's that's my whole oh, library yeah, man. that's my flavor profile right now um and so it, i just need to, to step away from the aisles for a while to, to rejuvenate my appreciation of i think i've kind of burned really myself nice. on yeah, well and it's summer yeah it's like, I, I find myself shying away a little bit like there are nights when i'm like you know what a peated whiskey sounds pretty damn good but there's a lot of nights when it's hot outside or you've been just kind of running around that a peated whiskey just doesn't sound like it I poured myself a decent one last I, I had a oh I poured some Ardbeg 10 last night while I was playing PUBG, shooting some people in the head. And it was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. I, I enjoyed it. Nothing wrong with that. No, it's Ardbeg. Hey man, I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna sneak one of these. Mm, yeah, that one right there. So I'm curious, we were talking about the Tamdu. I'm really curious to see when this batch four hits um, hits the states, if it's gonna be in the can. I, I really I kind of anticipate, I'd be really shocked if it doesn't show up like this. Here's what I'm kind of uh, interested in. So Tamdu's on our list of places to go visit. That is one of the distilleries that we really don't know anybody at the distillery. That's true. So we're we're going to hit them up pretty hard. But I would like a chance to get in front of somebody who has been responsible for the back strength series just to talk to them about it, you know, because the four was just, I mean, it was okay. But it was. But it, it wasn't. It, it, it was like it didn't belong in the lineup. No. Right. Everything else was consistent. Well, there was subtle differences, and then the four was like. When we did the when we did the blind, I knew the four without hesitation. Yep. Oh, yeah. I knew which one that we was. had that one pegged. Yep. Right. I'm gonna put that one over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I then think, I got to figure out these other three. I, when we talk about it, I have that conversation between Jules and. Uh, and Pulp Fiction when they're going up to freaking get the briefcase and they're talking about oh. foot rubs and he's like it's not even the same sport. <laughs> That's what <laughs> four was to me. It was like you know what I mean. I just I don't know, man. It's out there. Um, Chad Adams is hotter than hell. And you're drinking Pete. You need to lighten that up. You know, Lana, that's a good point. I, I can see how that could happen. I, I can see drinking, when you're drinking cast strength whiskeys 
I think it does kind of burn your palate out. Um, which what lineup was that? It was was it the Tamdu that I had to, I had to step back? Remember? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we did the Tamdu lineup, and it's the first time in four years that I'm like, guys, I got to call a TV timeout in the middle of a review because my my palate's just burnt. It's fried. Yeah. Um, I can't I can't taste I, anything. I think the problem with that particular lineup though was that they were all so very similar, like they had subtle differences. So. When you were drinking the cast strength, you were losing that subtlety that you had to pick up to be able to discern between the, well, the three. Well, that's right. right. Exactly. Um, that's exactly what I'm saying. If, you know, so I just went from that uh, barbecue and fishnets to uh, the Nutty Professor's Graham. Um, and still cast strength, but it's completely different whiskey from a completely different distillery. And, and I can pick up all the subtle nuances because it's, you know, it, it's so different. Mm -hmm. um, but I think from that lineup, it was tough, man. It really, really was. Um, there was a couple that was kind of like flip a coin because I mean they're they're really good. Um, yeah, you you kind of had to let your palate rest a little bit and, and give it some time. I don't know if I can do that um, on a month. Ah man, I don't know. I, I well, can't question. she stopped drinking bourbon. <laughs> She didn't say she stopped drinking for a month. I guess I could go on a gin <laughs> kick. <laughs> I do like gin. I could go on a gin bender for my wife's been really getting into gin. She, we probably have about seven or eight different gins on, on the counter. Really? Yeah, she's been coming over to your place. You should. She's she's really getting into them. She's I, uh, I enjoy a good gin. I, I will say, uh, I was thinking about getting some beers today. No, but because it's Fourth of July, and I was like, mm, I'll probably have gin instead. I don't know if it's more American or not. It seems kind of English but to for me, 4th of I, July. I think but a good uh, GMT just is, is so much more enjoyable in the summer heat, you know? Oh, God. You, you get a little lime in there, and it's just cold, and it's refreshing. And I feel um, like we got a good start on the night right now. Right. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Um, so I, I feel pretty good Are about you saying it. I'm going to have to call in sick for work tomorrow? I'm not saying you have to. <laughs> saying there's a potential. So, but I'm going to say no. I'm going to say it probably has been close on pre-shows. Drew is really. <sighs> What's that? He's a crowd code brown medical. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have to try Monkey 47 Gin. Blew your mind. Monkey 47. Where is that from? Okay. Don't hate gin, Tom. Hate's a strong word now. Don't be using that kind of language around here. <laughs> so, you guys, yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. But um, Joe Anderson, happy fourth. Roger that. Um, see, look at look at theirs. Ben's got Sandy, you know Sandy, the manager of Tamdu. Good guy. There you go. We got an awesome Sandy McIntyre. We'll be reaching well, out to we're, Sandy. We're going to be all over social media yeah. looking for Sandy. You don't mind if we name drop <laughs> you, Ben Marnock? <laughs> we, we, we I hope not because we're going to. Right. We name drop and Sandy's like, oh, Ben, that slimy son of a guy. I don't know. He um, still owes me 20 <laughs> uh, Man. So Germany. That's Peter Hoyer says Monkey 47 is a Germany, uh, a German gin. But, huh. um I'm not familiar with that one, but I I do like my gin. So, so I anyway, tonight I think we're just going to spend spend our family time together with the uh, with you guys, and and that's what our force is going to be like. I know my wife's not going to leave the house once the sun goes down because our our dog really freaks out, and she's a huge mom's girl. So my wife will lay in bed with the dog and keep her company and make sure she feels safe and everything. Uh, which means I'll probably be having a stogie and drinking. I'm, I'll turn on the nature channel for the dog and. She'll be fine. My wife has to work in the morning. I'm going to make sure you call in. They'll be fine. We'll be all good. At some it point happens. about I'm one in the morning, we're probably going to go down to Drew's house because he's got one of those ring doorbells. We're going to give him some video. You know yeah, I mean? Drew's got a ring video <laughs> doorbell thing. And um, I just I feel the need for him to show him some back-end video. I don't know. <laughs> You know, hi, Drew. Is that I winging at me? <laughs> it's, uh, I, no, it, I was going to say it's, it's all out of love, but that makes it kind of odd. That makes it strange. But, um, oh, no, it's just fun. Yeah. That'll, that'll be the time that his wife picks up the camera. It's like, what's Mark doing? No, she doesn't care about any of this stuff. 
<laughs> Drew's the one that's glued to the technology. Yeah, he is. <laughs> uh, anywho, I um, it's it's a little after three. We don't have a, a cutoff time. We no, didn't say we what don't. time we were going to stop. What time we we're going to, you know? We, if we keep going, we're just going to keep drinking. That's true. We could drink. This could be dinner. <laughs> Do you guys realize that we we may just have a liquid dinner now because of this? It's possible. I was kind of thinking about that. Um, <laughs> not gonna lie. It wouldn't be the first time, and I'm positive it won't be the last time. But um. All in all, we do have a, a good Glenmore lineup video that we talked about. And I, what, what kind of videos do we have on, on the horizon as far as I, – I do believe, and I'm, I'm speaking out of turn. I need to research this. Can anybody – I wanted to throw a shout-out. I think I heard that the test dummies are doing a, another 12 hours of boom. So any of you test dummy fans out there know more than I do, put it in the chat so oh. we can make sure that everybody knows about it. I know this is kind of BS putting this thing right at the end of the show, but – you know, the Supreme Court ruled on that whole. Uh, oh no! What? Yeah. what? So, so, so what? they so they ruled in favor of um, the the out of state. State? Yeah. Okay. So basically, what happened is total wine. Yeah. So well, no, this wasn't total wine. Total wine was a different one, but this was. I thought it was total wine. Anyway, Supreme Court ruled that if you have in-state shipping, one. you because of the Commerce Clause, you can't. You can't say in-state people can ship, but out-of-state people can't. It's right. not It's not right. fair, right. right? So if you're going to let somebody ship to your house, then everybody gets to ship to your house. So there was still a bunch of states that didn't allow in-state shipping. There was a couple of states that, um, that the, the state controlled the distribution of the liquor anyway. Um, but for every state that allows in-state shipping, and there are quite a few, uh, that if you allowed in-state shipping, you couldn't bar out-of-state shippers from shipping to you. Is Indiana Which, allowed? Did, yeah. Do you get SMWs yeah. to your house? Then it didn't buy, it didn't matter to us. But there was a bunch of states where this was a big deal. Um, that they were they were you know unfairly. But it should matter to us. Well, how did it affect the out-of-state shipping? So You're basically, the in state. So basically, the, the the states that allowed. So like, if you owned a a micro distillery in a certain state, right? And so the state had said, in order to promote business within the state, that this little micro distillery, if you ordered from them, they could ship to you if you lived in the state, right? Right. Well, if you were allowed to do that, then they they couldn't. Stop another they state from shipping in. Exclude everybody else. But what I'm saying is, then, how does it affect the instances where there are some people that can't ship to the United to, to Indiana because they're in a certain state? That that may be. It's like the other side of the coin here. Yeah. Is well, that, was that affected? Because a lot of this came about with it. It, it all started with the wine industry because it was all reciprocation. Sure. Sure. Right? Sure. So if you let me ship to your state, I'll let you ship to my state, kind of. Like right. that's how this all came Makes about, sense. right? Well, what the Supreme Court said was that's all BS. Like, if you allow shipping in your state, then you allow shipping in your state. Right. Open to all fifty. It is what it is. Right. Right. And I so and I think that that's fair. Uh, but I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of interested to see where this goes. But says it affected Arizona. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens now. Yeah, Ben, Eric, Eric. You know what's funny, Bud? Eric is in London now, I believe. I. I lived in Arizona for years, and when I moved out there from Indiana, Indiana <laughs> had very segregated, like, you could go buy some beer and stuff in, in grocery stores, but that was about it. Um, you know, and I rolled into Arizona on my first Sunday, and I had a nice, I had an Albertsons next to my apartment building, a really nice one, and because uh, I lived up on Frank Lloyd Wright, I was in a nice area, didn't have any money, but I lived in a nice part of town. Um, so... I roll into this grocery store and it's a Sunday morning. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning. It's during football season. And this lady's got her two kids grocery cart and she's putting a keg in a special grocery cart because they had a cold area back in the back. So she rolled back and grabbed the keg to roll home with her, which I was like, that's, that's awesome. Uh, but then they, they're weird about their shipping stuff. So I'm glad that you may have an opportunity to get some stuff shipped into you. We, we may have to, Chip in and get you an SMWS membership now. <laughs> um, so, Tom, $2. Cheers. Super chat. Cheers to that. 1776 would have been better. 
Um, I'm kidding. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate you, brother. You know that. Mm. So everyone had to had to bugger out, and I get that. So Tom said, um, "Boom starts at 10 a.m. Central." Was that today? I I didn't. I don't understand why I didn't know about it. Other people were talking about I think that. That was my mom getting the cake. It may have been, but it was a long time ago. <laughs> so I'm trying to find out what day is the 12 hours of boom. If it's today and we're we're stepping all over there, we need to get off. So so Brooks, yeah, I mean what they're talking about is a fairness precedent. So, you know, it's a commerce clause deal. So if they're gonna let people ship, then they have to let everybody ship. Now I think the states are still allowed to put some rules in place as far as like how this all works out. Um, but it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it works out. I'm <laughs> what a dork, bud. you're killing me, man. Uh, so I, I think that it's a good thing. I think it opened up some, some doors that were previously closed for no good reason. I mean, we're, we're in 2019 and prohibition is still affecting what goes on in this country. I mean, it is absolutely crazy to me how, how weird it is. Um, you know, just how random the alcohol laws are because I've lived in several different States. And if you've lived in more than one state, you are amazed at the differences. Um, even if you travel to different States, you can get, you know, there's States where you can take your kids in the bar and sit at the bar and nobody Thank cares. You, and, you know, Indiana, I've got to have, you know, I'm in the process of building a new restaurant and I've got, you know, there's all kinds of weird liquor laws. I've got to have walls that are so high and I've got to have separation between, um, you know, the dining area and the bar area where the liquor is shown to like save kids from drinking. I don't know how that works, but whatever. Um, so Highlander 1999 wants to know, how do we get our bottles sent from SNWS? Uh, honestly, it's not so, coming from overseas. It's coming no. from New York. What SMWS is is actually I want to use I don't want to confuse it. It's almost like chapterized. There, the SMWS here in the United States is called SMWS Americas, and it's its own it's an importer. It's it's its own incorporation. It's really an importer to the SMWS. So, as members of the SMWS, we buy from SMWS Americas here, but our card. Is still uh, we're still a member of the SNWS. So if we came to Scotland, we could get into any of the partner bars or, or Leith or whatnot. But it, it is its own entity, and it's its own entity that has to buy the bottles from the SNWS in, yeah. in Scotland. So every month, Scotland allocates and says to the U.S. market, "Hey, here's what you guys are going to get." And then I, I'm pretty sure that SNWS A Americas has to buy that from them, and then they turn around. They so it, it, it's it's business, but that's an it's, importing it's, yeah, thing. It's confusing. It's, it has to do with importation taxes. Uh, um, There's stuff that's out of our league, right? And and it's it is a little bit confusing on what we get offered, but I do know that the S the um, uh, U S market is now big enough to actually garner its own attention from the SMWS because I I believe there's 19 yeah, around the globe. Right. There's 19 different. Um, areas like uh there's smws smws america's smws probably germany smws france sm you know each there there's different ones around the globe and they're all treated independently with the smws being the umbrella over the top i yeah. believe I, well i mean it's an international company like sure that, but it's you know it's like any other large i mean they're they're getting to be a large alcohol corporation in right. that they have you know you have to have separate divisions in each country to import and export product you know so tom says screw youtube and it's youtube that's for sure um so anyway i wanted to make a, sh a correction 12 hours of boom starts on saturday thank you for the clarification chad um uh, that's a long that's 12 hours is tough i we, we've never done it i don't know if i have the stamina to do that but uh we, we usually tune in for a little while yeah and, and I mean, not, it's a long day doors and say hey you know and try to keep them going but um so lana lou and trooper henry um honestly you can't go wrong starting anywhere in smws and if your states are one of these states that got opened up uh you should call smws and see what you can do about uh getting some stuff in your state um for real, I, I don't think I've ever had a bad bottle of SMWS. I've had bottles that I enjoyed more, but I've never had one I've been disappointed in. 
Right. So, so the, the big thing is, is number one, just to make sure that they, if they ship to your state. Um, if they ship to your state, then it's, it's well worth it, obviously. But again, if, if you are thinking of signing up, make sure you reach out to a current member to get that current member like a $20 credit by you signing up a, as a referral from them. Because then the SMWS Americas gives that current member a $20 credit towards their next bottle. Cost you nothing. You were gonna, you know what I mean? Um, which I think I've lost out on many twenty dollar credits. But at the end of the day, whatever. I mean, um, I order a few bottles here and there when I can. Um, and obviously, I have a budget just like everybody else. I wish my budget were a little bit bigger because there are some bottles I'd like to to stretch for. But right, you know, it's just not my life. So uh, I luckily I, I get a chance to sample some from time to time. Yep, and and we are very fortunate. Yeah. Uh, but if you do get a chance, uh, I mean, there's partner bars all over the country, too. So sure. if you're traveling, um, if you go to the SMWS website, they can let you know what the partner bars are. And you can go there and, and try some of the drams without actually being a member. Uh, they'll, they'll give members a discount, but um, you, you can still drink them. And, and that lets you get a, a sample of what you're getting into before you spend the yeah. money on the membership. So the, the irony in that, though, is is not to, I don't want to oversell that for everybody because I've, I've, I've you, you've done, been in some sketchy I've partner done it, bars. Right, I've gone into some partner bars. They're listed on the SMWS America's partner bar listing, and you go in there, and yes, they got a couple of SMWS uh, bottles, and you're like excited, um, but they don't really want anything to do with it. You know, they're like, oh, the owner's a member, so we had to put those bottles up here. I'm like, oh, well, uh, can I get my discount? You know, oh, like, well. Well, whatever. They don't want to talk to you about the whiskey. They don't, they don't, know, they anything don't know anything about it. But I've been in some like Jack Rose in D.C., which when you order an SMWS tram and you pull your membership card, the manager on shift brings the bottle out, presents it to you, talks to you about it, wants to know what you know. I mean, they pull up a chair and it's an experience. I've so been like, to a couple in Chicago for that. Yeah, way that's too. the way I wanted it to yeah. be. But the one, you know, she was fired up. Just like the, the, the cocktail waitress knew more about whiskey than... Right, you know, than but I so did. the way the way those partner bars work right now, in my experience, anyway, I'm, I'm not just I'm not the truth here, but my experience is those partner bars are, are acquiring SMWS bottles through either the manager or the owner's membership. So it's not like the SMWS is sending that bar bottles and saying here, you know, promote us. No, there is somebody that works or owns that bar that is a member and is buying those bottles on their membership. It's it, it's just kind of weird, but it still gives you an opportunity to go in there and get some. Uh, I've had I've spent I've probably spent the most expensive dram I ever bought was on a damn SMWS dram. But or has to eat his ice cream during the twelve hours. Ah, it's not that bad. Bart will pick a man up. I don't think he's going to be upset about it. Uh, SMWS actually, I'm drinking a bottle that I got for like. This was a cheap one. This was yes, like ninety it's, bucks, maybe. Yeah, it's an eight year. Yeah, it's an eight and, year old. Yeah, yeah, it was like eighty or ninety bucks, and it's exquisite. So you know, I, I, we've had some. I've got a three year old bottle of SMWS back there that's really damn good. Yeah, eating milk. So you know, I mean, they've got some really good bottles for. I mean, yeah, you can spend five hundred bucks on a bottle, but I think the you majority, the majority of the bottles you're looking at are a hundred, between a hundred and two hundred bucks would be my. And that's cask strength, so you gotta you gotta weigh yeah. it. But I mean, I'm know, not hitting it hard. Um, it, it, to me, it's fun. I'm using it as an educational piece now because I'm really starting to try to force myself to not look the distilleries up. I did that for the first year of my membership. You know, I was really hell bent on the numbers, and I actually memorized a lot of them. You know, so if you're like, "Hey, I got a bottle of you know XX dot XXX," I'd be like, "Oh yes, yeah, you know, it's a Glenlocky. Yeah, it's pretty good, right?" And, I tr I'm trying to forget that and not care about the number, but the flavor profile and the write-up and try yeah. to, because I, I want to experience some distilleries that I'm afraid to buy. My, my experience hey, with SMWS Ian. has been, I like to, <laughs> like if you get a <laughs> Dalmore that's a cast strength and, you know, a, a ex bourbon cast that you're not getting any cask influence on and you're just going to try this out. It's really cool because it's so different from Dalm Wars that you normally oh, see absolutely. on the store shelf, yeah. right? So I, I still like the distillery numbers just because I like to know what I'm drinking in that sense. But I also really like to read the reviews see, and, I, and find out what's going on. So, you know, SMWS is fun. They, they, they do a nice job of what they do. 
I'm so, not going to argue with Tom, him. Tom's making sure that Lana uses his code for uh, for the, the credit. That's fine, Tom. I'll just let you know that I did pour a nice dram of Spring Bank 12 cast rink last night, uh, and I thought of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're uh, we're running into almost an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. We it's didn't time, even have the other two guys there. It's time to, to, to wrap it up and let everybody get on to their barbecues and their um, their. Well, I hope explosives. everybody has a happy 4th of July. Whether you are in the states or not, and uh, enjoy a dram. Thanks for joining us quickly and yeah, promptly. And, and and, 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 uh, glad that we got so many people from the UK on. Like that's really awesome. Yeah, um, glad to spend time with you guys. Thank you, Bill, for sending us. Absolutely, quotes. they're really nice. Um, we'll make sure uh, Mike gets his. Yep, he'll get his. That's for sure. And everybody, be careful tonight. Be in, be safe. Don't enjoy blow up the fire. Hand. Right. Enjoy the fireworks. Don't blow up your neighbor's mailbox. That's a felony. Just going to let you know. <laughs> Have a sky extra relax. Enjoy your day. Hey, happy 4th of July. Thanks Cheers, everybody. Cheers, brother. Let's go do this, brother. Hell yeah.